Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, gentlemen, thank you for being here. I, I think this is a really important hearing because we all know this is a win-win proposition for everybody. Employers, our country needs hard workers, uh, our members of the military, their families, to be able to come off active duty and go into a good paying job. And, um, and then to have a workforce where the men and women that you hire know what it's like to have discipline and get up at 05 or 04 or whatever and be on time. I mean, this is a win all over the place. So I wanna ask a specific question. I had a provision that uh, was in last year's NDAA that encouraged DOD to partner with local employers, local unions, the building trades uh, in Alaska in particular hire a lot of members coming out of the military. And what I've seen is that a lot of times it's really um, base commander specific, meaning, hey, a base commander at J Bear might be like, yeah, let's bring the unions and the employers on base. Our guys can start doing transition stuff. Uh, early before, you know, one day before they get out. And then you have a new commander and all that goes away. So what my, what my NDAA provision was to try to get DOD to focus on kind of from a broad perspective, let's do that across the board. And um, can I get an update from any of you on where DOD has been with regard to working with these groups at higher like I said, local unions, a lot of them have a really good program. The IBW, for example, has a really good program in Alaska. Um, in uh, contractors, in the uh, construction trades. If you have an update on that, I'd love to hear about it, but you might recall this provision. And then I do wanna, maybe I'll just ask the second question next. It follows up on Senator Kelly's question about credentialing. And the one area in particular that I think is really important is the maritime industry. You might remember President Trump signed an executive order that would make it easier for transitioning military members in the maritime space to waive licenses in allowing their experience to count towards merchant mariner cr credentialing and other credentials. But again, these are super well-trained, ready to go, and sometimes um, we make it hard a lot of times we make it hard. So two questions, I'll throw it out to uh, any and all the witnesses, but if you can take that first one first and then the one on credentialing, following up on Senator Kelly's question. Thank you. Senator, so we continue to work with employers and try and expand our the engagement with employers to help transitioning uh, veterans. So we continue to grow the SkillBridge program. Yeah, the SkillBridge program is great, by the way, and I think it, you think it's going well? Senator, we do believe it's going well. We've had, uh, we had over 22,000 participants in the SkillBridge program last year. Great. Uh, a high percentage of those uh, participants convert to full-time employee with their SkillBridge uh, internship. We're, we're replicating that program for military spouses with a military spouse career accelerator program, providing them with a 12-week fellowship so that they can gain that. And we're seeing an 80% conversion there as well. Do you agree with me it's a little bit base commander dependent and we could do a better job of kind of making sure everybody is on board with this? Or is that just something I'm seeing back home in Alaska? Senator, I, I do believe that there are areas of the country where, particularly for service members who want to stay in the place, they want to retire from the location that they're in, that we can probably do a better job engaging at the local level yeah. and local employers. And so, Senator, that's something that I'll take back. I'd love to work with you and your team Great. to figure out how do we drive more local engagement at a, across the enterprise with consistency. Yeah, that's really important. That's what my NDAA provision from last year was about. And then real quick on credentialing, anyone who wants to take that one on, I know it's a big topic, but it's got so much promise. Senator there, we continue to, to focus on our credentialing program. Um, we provide a tool that will allow service members to gain their credential and a tool also as well to figure out how when to When they're still on active duty? While they're still on active duty oh, to earn their credentials. And, and then we engage with the Department of Labor through the U.S. Military Apprenticeship Program, and service members can gain a Department of Labor, Labor Journeyman Certificate, and, and we have over 93,000 participants in that program. And Mr. Rodriguez may want to comment. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Rajbani. Senator, I just wanted to add that I spent the week in Alaska and I visited the commanders of Jay Bear. If you recall, during my confirmation here, and he asked me to go to Alaska, so we spent the week there. Thank you. I met with the commanders. They said exactly what you did. They wanted connections to the local community. We had our state director <coughs> come. We actually went to American Job Center there at the local level to so ensure that they were connected. And we uh, spoke to the uh, electric workers union out there, IBEW. I visited yeah. them as well. Good. So there's a strong relationship at the local community with the commanders. But as you mentioned, that often changes when the commander does uh, change, have a change of command. But the resources are there at the local levels. We have to ensure that they understand that those resources exist and make sure that we are continually connect with the incoming commanders as well. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman.